Uh, guys, what was the mentality like in the huddle when you guys were down by 13 with the way things were going with Illinois coming out in the locker room in the second half, hitting almost all their shots, and you guys couldn't seem to buy a basket for some stretches? Um, I, I thought uh, the biggest thing was to just not lose confidence in our guards, and uh, Nigel included. Um, coach got on us that we needed to get the ball in a little bit more, but we were getting good shots. We just needed to knock them down, and they did that in the second half. Ethan, where's your confidence level defensively, and is there an art to uh, stealing the basketball? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, there were a couple times where I shouldn't have gambled, and um, I did get beat, so I, I kind of got to crowd that back in a little bit. But uh, the biggest thing is, growing up, I always played point guard and kind of read the uh, kind of read the the scene that way. And then once I shot up, it's it's been a lot easier to get around bigger guys. Jeff. Nigel, over on this side. You guys obviously did not shoot the ball well at Michigan State. Didn't shoot the ball well in the first half today of the team. What was the key in your in estimation to getting some shots to fall in the second half? Was it getting the ball inside? Was it getting to the free throw line and getting a little confidence? What happened there? Uh, we were 5 for 20 from 3. So shots still didn't fall. Um, but we just did a much better job of Getting to the free throw line, I think we shot we not think we shot 33 free throws. Um, and again, you all know that the uh, saying is, if you make more free throws than the other team attempts, you will usually win. Um, and we we're led by our point guard who makes his own time. So as you see, he strolls in when he feels like it. Point guard leader. Uh, this is for anyone. Um, what kind of mental toughness does it take to battle back when you're down by 13? And what do you guys think that says about your uh, resiliency? I got it. Stop. Um, this is kind of a uh, carryover. Brownson and I could tell you uh, from last year when we were playing, there was always moments where we were, we were down, whether it be 13 or whatever, our critical points in the game. And we would um, all give each other a look as, you know, let's turn this around, right the ship, let's get everything going. And we kind of did that. Um, after they went up 13 or 11 in the time I was called, um, we all kind of huddled together and looked at one another. And we knew that in order to, you know, still try and reach the goals that we have, we had to take care of business, turn this around, and we were able to come out and do that. Bronson, what was the mentality like uh, in at halftime? What was said in the locker room? Well, we pretty much just said that we have to start getting some stops first and foremost, and then get the ball inside, get to the free throw line. Just play like we've played uh, during that seven-game winning streak, basically, because we kind of got away from that. Jim in the back. Nigel, it's one thing for last year's team to kind of have that look in the huddle where you guys kind of all know what has to be done. When you can do that now, um, is that a sign that this team has come a long way in the maturity department since you know eight, uh, ten weeks ago? It's, it's definitely a sign. I mean, of course, it's not the same as it was, you know, last year. We all know that, but we're developing that um, that winning way, which I always spoke about at the beginning of the year when we were losing the close games. It was we didn't have the habits to win because you know teams that win find ways to win. Teams that are not comfortable with that do things to make themselves lose. And we're slowly creeping over into that area. So now when we get in situations like that, we're able to look at one another and know that we can count on this guy. I can count on Ethan. I can count on Bronson. And we could all do our jobs individually, which collectively will allow us to, if we're down, come back. Or if we're in like you know trading baskets, we're able to pull away and win the game. Jeff in the back. Bronson, you mentioned the talk at halftime was about getting stops. But I think I stopped counting when they made eight of their first nine shots in the second half. When that happens, and some of them were tough shots by Hill, what, what turned it around defensively? Because obviously after a while, they could not hit and weren't getting as good yeah. of looks as they got. Um, I think uh, Coach told us that we're going to stop switching because they ran the same play like four times in a row or something. Um, so yeah, we just uh, made, a little, uh, made a little change on defense, and it worked. Tom. 
Bronson, you said you know you guys got away from what you're doing. How does that? Why does that happen? Uh, maybe, maybe you did it against Michigan State. Yeah, I think it was just a little bit of a hangover, carryover from Michigan State, a little bit, just that uncharacteristicness. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know. It happens to it happens to everyone. So I'm glad we uh, were resilient and we matured a little bit tonight, which is good to see. Bronson, how, how frustrating was it for the team in the first half in general, just seeing all the shots rim out? Yeah, um, <clears throat> especially with their game plan, double the post when uh, Ethan gets it out and uh, have him uh, start kicking the ball out and, you know, right on the money and it just doesn't, doesn't go in. Um, that can be pretty frustrating. Um, so, uh, I mean, we just kept doing what we, what we did and uh, kept getting the ball inside and eventually Ethan started converting.